Dear fellow truth seekers, thank you and welcome for visiting my channel, Mitha Religio. Mitha Religio is a video channel based on a book series with the same name about religious comparison studies between the stories in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, directly from their sacred books and world mythologies, hence the name Mitha Religio. The purpose is to retrace the prehistory of humanity, since I'm not fully satisfied with either the explanations from the point of view of creationists nor evolutionists. There are so many missing links in both explanations. If you feel the same, then you are on the right channel. In this channel, I will also analyze about the prehistory of humanity from the archaeological records, modern scientific point of view, and other alternative theories such as the ancient alien theories and Atlantis or Lemuria legends. After thorough research of circa 30 years, I recognize many, many similarities between all religious stories and even mythologies, and surprisingly, some of them are in accordance or even beyond modern science that have been proven as correct. Thus, I came to the conclusion that all religions must have come from the same source, and all these religious stories and mythologies, although heavily jumbled up, are actually telling one mega story, the true prehistory of our common ancestors. This mega story is quite different than what we have been told to believe and will truly blow your mind as it is more fascinating than our imagination. If you have watched the earlier videos in this channel, I believe you can see some of the similarities too. If you haven't and you truly want to do a religious comparative study, I suggest that you do so. The best way to do a comprehensive religious study via this channel is by watching the videos starting from number one and continue until this present video and so on. That way you will see a clear pattern. In this channel, I will share almost all that I have written in my book series. However, there is one book so far that I cannot share in this channel due to its sensitive, shocking and dark nature and also might be considered controversial to some, but I believe it sheds more light to the above conclusion. If you want to read this around 500 pages ebook with many full color illustrations, you are more than welcome to download book number 5 entitled History of the Dark Side that is available for free in ebook format that can be found in my website www.mythorelligio.com You only have to give your email address and it will be sent to you directly. And no, I won't share your email address nor send any advertisement. The link is in the description box. If you want to get the physical book, kindly go to amazon.com Now let's continue with this week's video. Video number 80 from Mythorelligio series book 4 Mysterious Ancient Megalithic Constructions, Part 3 Dear fellow truth seekers, In my previous videos, I have shared with you some out-of-place artifacts that have been found by archaeologists that are simply too advanced to have been made by our primitive ancestors. Besides the abundance of unexplainable out-of-place artifacts, there are also many enigmatic ancient megalithic constructions in the world. And until today, it remains a mystery as to how did our supposedly primitive ancestors build them. In the past few weeks, I've shared with you the mysterious megalithic constructions in Europe and in the Middle East. Now, we will continue with other megalithic constructions in another part of the world, that is in South America. Inca Walls the Inca began as a small tribe who steadily grew in power to conquer other peoples all down the coast from Colombia to Argentina. The administrative, political and military center of the empire was in the city of Cusco in the Peruvian Andes sometime in the early 13th century CE. The Incas have a very unique way of constructing walls. Most of these walls were found around Cusco and Urubamba River in the Peruvian Andes. These walls are different than any other ancient monolithic stoneworks. The stones are huge, not colossal, 
as the ones from Baalbek, but it's the way they are cut and assembled that amazed us today. The stones are cut in a regular manner. They are fitted so perfectly that no blade of grass or steel can slide between them without the use of mortar. Modern men can neither explain why and how nor can we duplicate them. The Incas did not need to use mortar or cement, firstly because the adjoining surfaces between two adjacent blocks fit so perfectly and exquisitely together and also because the stones were interlocked in a combination that could not be budged. Inca stone masons would work the stones until their ship fit exactly alongside all the other blocks that would be positioned alongside that block. In this picture is one of the famous Inca walls in Cusco. You can see where the center stone has been worked meticulously so that it fits together with a total of 11 other stones alongside it. All 11 of these stones have likewise been shaped to fit snugly against those stones respectively adjacent to them. The ingenuity of Inca stone masonry doesn't stop at fitting a few blocks together just to build their Inca walls. Such construction was necessary to prevent destruction in the event of all too regular earthquakes and the walls were so designed that they would absorb the impact. Even many modern buildings have been obliterated by earthquakes today. It is quite amazing how primitive ancient people like the Incas could come up with such sophisticated method hundreds of years ago. Saksai Woman The Inca wall technique is also used on Saksai Woman, an ancient Inca's ruin at an altitude of 3,701 meters or 12,139 feet above sea level. It is a walled complex laden with mystery near the old city of Cusco, Peru. The immense fortress was built by huge stone blocks weighing up to 300 tons, but nobody knows how these stones were cut, moved and put into place. The longest of the three Saksai woman walls is about 400 meters or 1,312 feet long and 6 meters or 19.6 feet tall. About 6,000 cubic meter or 211,888 cubic feet volume of stone had gone into the construction work. The limestone blocks that went into the construction of the wall weighed up to 300 tons. The transportation of the stone blocks at that age is really interesting. Some of the bigger ones had to be transported more than 80 kilometers or 50 miles across rugged mountainous terrain. According to historians today, the Incas did not use wheeled vehicles like chariots at that time. So supposedly, the gigantic stones were partially shaped in the quarry Cachicata, then slid down the hill and dragged across the river and fields. Strange enough, approximately 600 meters or 2000 feet above the river in the quarries, one can see a stone wheel. It is apparently a mill wheel, 157 centimeters or 62 inches in diameter, with a good part of the back side split off. So, who made this wheel? The Spanish invaders considered themselves superior in military technology than the Incas. They were shocked at the Incas' achievement. Some Spanish chroniclers have degraded the Incas in their chronicles and have written that the fortress had been built by evil spirits and demons. Saksai Huaman was supposedly completed around 1508 CE. Depending on who you listen to, it took a crew of 20,000 to 30,000 men working for 60 years. The chronicler Garcilaso de la Vega was born around 1530 and raised in the shadow of these walls. And yet, he seems not to have had a clue as to how Saksai Huaman was built. He wrote, This fortress surpasses the construction known as the Seven Wonders of the World. For in the case of a long broad wall like that of Babylon, or the Colossus of Rhodes, or the Pyramids of Egypt, or the other monuments, one can see clearly how they were executed. How? By summoning an immense body of workers and accumulating more and more material day by day and year by year. 
They overcame all difficulties by employing human effort over a long period. But it is indeed beyond the power of imagination to understand now these Indians, unacquainted with devices, engines and implements, could have cut, dressed, raised and lowered great rocks more like lumps of hills than building stones, and set them so exactly in their places. For this reason, and because the Indians were so familiar with demons, the work is attributed to enchantment. Surely, a few of those 20,000 laborers were still around when Garcilaso was young. Was everyone struck with amnesia? Or is Saksai Huaman much older than we have been led to believe? Archaeologists tell us that the walls of Saksai Huaman rose 3 meters or 10 feet higher than their remnants. That additional 3 meters or 10 feet of stones supplied the building materials for the cathedrals and casas of the conquistadors. It is generally conceded that these stones were much smaller than those lithic monsters that remain. Perhaps the upper part of the walls constructed of small, regularly shaped stones was the only part of Saksai Hiwaman that was built by the Incas and finished in 1508. This could explain why no one at the time of the conquest seemed to know how these mighty walls were built. Source the ancient walls by Richard Nisbet. Machu Picchu Machu Picchu, often referred to as the lost city of the Incas, is another Inca site located at 2,430 meters or 7,970 feet above sea level, on a mountain ridge above the Urubamba Valley in Peru. A unique thing about Machu Picchu is the integration of the architecture into the landscape. Existing stone formations were used in the construction of structures, sculptures are carved into the rock, water flows through cisterns and stone channels, and temples hang on steep precipices. No one knows how the stones were fitted with such precision or how they were carried up the narrow passages to such a high altitude. The structures of Machu Picchu are not as gigantic as those at Sacsayhuaman, but some are surely finer. Because Machu Picchu was never discovered and ransacked by the Spanish conquistadors, it is something of a time capsule. The stoneworks here showed astonishing differences in quality of craftsmanship. In many places, there are walls in the lower levels of the fine quality that is the hallmark of ancient Indian stoneworks. Then, as the walls rise, the quality of work diminishes. The lower layers are always finer always more precise than those above. One gets the feeling that these are remnants of old walls that were discovered and built upon by later hands. It is now generally thought that at the time of the Spanish conquest, knowledge of Machu Picchu had been lost by the Incas themselves. However, modern historians somehow attributed its construction to Pachacutec, the ninth Inca who reigned in the mid of 15th century CE. According to the local legend, Pachacutec defeated his enemies, Chanchas, with the help of god Inti, the sun god, who made the stones surrounding the imperial city of Cusco, became soldiers of the Inca to then defeat their enemies. And who built the older layers of constructions in Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman? We do not know. What happened to the knowledge of building such magnificent structures? We do not know. There are many more of such megalithic constructions around the world and I will continue sharing them in my next videos. For now, allow me to thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.